Kaiwa, I'm a lecturer in the Management Accounting and Finance Department. And today I'm going to be taking you through financial statement analysis. Now let's discuss our learning objectives. So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to define financial statement analysis. You should be able to identify the reasons why financial statements are analyzed. We also need to, you should also be able to evaluate comparison basis. And we need to discuss tools for analysis. So under tools for analysis, we're going to talk about horizontal analysis, we're going to speak about vertical analysis, and last but not least, ratio analysis. So we said we're going to analyze financial statements. So what are these financial statements? So from your uh, financial reporting, you know there is what is called a statement of financial position, which an, uh, analyzes the statement or the financial position at a specific point in time, with the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, which summarizes your revenue and your expenses of an accounting period and the length of the year ended with what is known as the statement of changes in equity. We also have statement of cash flows. So your statement of cash flows now discusses the amount of cash generated during a period which is normally not shown in your balance sheet or your statement of financial position. So we have categories under in the statement of uh, your cash flows, which is your operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Just to further explain a statement of financial position, we also have notes which form part of financial statements. So these are the financial statements that we will be analyzing. So the definition of a financial statement analysis is the process of critical evaluation of the financial information contained in financial statements. Which financial statements? The ones we previously we just discussed. In order to understand and make decisions regarding the operations of the firm. So after you have uh, operated, we are now forward looking. I now need to make a decision and understand what happened in the past and to make a decision regarding the operations of the firm. I now need to analyze financial statements. So the term financial analysis includes both analysis and interpretation. So if you analyze and you don't interpret, you have just given me one leg of financial analysis. So you are supposed to analyze and interpret. What does it mean if one, two, three, four, five things happen? So why? to be analyze financial statements. So, we need to analyze financial statements, why? To perform an assessment of the firm's past, current, and future financial conditions. Now, let's discuss further. So, financial statements um, report a firm's position at a point in time and on operations over some past period. So, in uh, in analyzing or in ana in analyzing financial statements, I can perform as an assessment of an entity's past uh, condition. I can predict into the future, and I can use the current information to further expand on the operations of an entity. I also need to analyze financial statements. Why? To identify a firm's financial strengths and weaknesses. So from this from this investors use financial statements to predict future earnings or dividends. Management also use financial statements to help anticipate future conditions and is the starting point for planning actions that will affect future events. So with this in mind, I can identify my business uh, financial strengths and weaknesses being aided by the 
analysis tools that we shall discuss further, explaining how do I watch, how do I analyze using the tools. So financial ratios help evaluate a financial statement and they, facil and they facilitate comparison of firms. How do I know I'm the market leader? How do I know I'm excelling better? It's by comparison of my firm to another firm or comparison of division Y to division Z. Now let's discuss the analysis techniques. We now know why we need to analyze financial statements to have a peek into the future. We can predict the future earnings, future dividend for investors and then we can be motivated to invest. But how do they analyze? So the analysis techniques, there is what is known as horizontal analysis. Horizontal or comparative statement analysis. It is also known as the base year analysis. So a horizontal analysis is used in financial statement analysis to compare historical data, such as ratios, line items over an accounting period. So horizontal analysis can either use absolute amounts or percentage comparisons. So in this case, as the name suggests, I'm, I am comparing on a horizontal basis. So I have 2017 figures and 2018 figures. If I go line item by line item by line item, going across in a horizontal manner, that is what is called a horizontal analysis. So a horizontal analysis allows investors and analysts to see what has been driving the company's financial performance over a number of years. From this, I can be able to spot trends, what is known as a trend analysis, and growth in patterns and seasonality. So I can be able to establish the changes in growth patterns, such as change in seasons if my product is affected by a change in season. So by looking at what is the income statement, the statement of, uh, statement of financial position, the cash flow statement, one can create a complete picture of operational results and see what has been driving the company's performance over the, over the years. Now let's discuss further with what we call vertical analysis, which is also known as common size financial statements. So by common size, it now means I now need to analyze using what? Using size. So with this in mind, a vertical analysis is a method of financial statement analysis in which each line item is listed, is listed as a percentage of the base figure within the statement. For example, within an income statement, a percentage of sales to what? To cost of sales or a percentage of total assets to total, a percentage of inventory or PPE to total assets or liabilities is an example of a vertical analysis. So under the same classification, so for example, under non-current assets, I have my PPE and my invent, my, my PPE and my intangible assets. Under my current assets, I have my inventory, my trade receivables. If I express inventory as a percentage of the total uh, non, uh, current assets, that's an example of a vertical analysis. I use the same cluster or the line item expressed as a percentage of a base figure within the statement. So a typical example I have just given you. So why would one want to use a vertical analysis? So from a horizontal analysis, we say I can be able to, to spot a trend over the years. What's been driving my company's performance over the years, I pick the trend, or if my business has been affected, a growth part, change has been affected, for example, by changing season. But for a vertical analysis, it makes it easier to compare financial statements of one company with the other. 
and across industries. Hence, the very common size financial statements. It is also easier to compare previous periods for this time series analysis, in which quarterly or annual figures are compared over the number of years. Why do I do this? I want to gain a picture of where the performance metrics are improving or deteriorating. So I am comparing with another company or with across the industry. Why? To gain a picture of whether my performance metrics are improving or deteriorating. Last but not least, we have what is known as ratio analysis. I'm sure this is not your first time hearing the ratio analysis from your area of studies and from your undergraduate studies you covered ratio analysis. So I'm going to go into detail with ratio analysis. So for ratio analysis, I'm not going to be calculating with you, but I'm going to, be, to highlight the different classes of, of ratios. To start off, what is ratio analysis? A ratio analysis provides uh, standardized financial information for comparison. So it's standardized financial information for comparison. If I can calculate liquidity ratios using a standard way, I can be able to compare financial information from com of company A with financial information from company B. I can evaluate current operations and I can compare performance, which is my current performance with past performance. Using ratio analysis, I am able to compare my performance against other companies or other uh, or within the industry. So it, it, it will also help me study the efficiency of my operations and study the risk of my operations. So who uses a ratio analysis? Managers, I, they use them to analyze, to control and improve a firm's operations. A credit analyst or creditors use them to ascertain a company's ability to pay back. A stock analyst can use them to determine a company's efficiency, risk and growth potential. Those are examples of users of financial statements who can use ratio analysis for their financial statement analysis. So under ratio analysis, we have classes of ratio, liquidity ratios, leverage, activity and profitability ratios. I'm sure the classifications can be many, but they are mainly four. So under the liquidity ratios, they measure the firm's ability to meet current obligations. So which ones are my current obligations? Likely my trade payables. So under these ones, I have my asset test ratio, my current ratio. As I move on, I have what is known as my leverage ratios. These ratios show the proportion of debt and equity in the financing of a firm's assets. Now what comes to your mind? Definitely weighted average cost of capital. So the ratios under this leverage include your debt to equity ratio and your gearing ratios. These linking to your work will be able to help you establish what? Your weighted average cost of capital which you need when deciding whether to invest in a project or to evaluate whether to, uh, to acquire a business going into valuation. We also have a classification what is known as activity ratios which reflects the firm's efficiency in utilizing the assets which is your inventory turnover, your data state, your credit state. Last but not least, we have a classification known as profitability ratios. These ratios measure overall performance and effectiveness of the firm. Activity ratios measure efficiency. How efficient are we in our operations or in utilizing the assets? And now profitability measures the effectiveness. If I put A plus B plus C, how effective is it? In, uh, in measure in, uh, in achieving overall performance of an entity. So under this, with your normal gross profit margin markup, 
the general capture employed the general assets and so on. Now let's discuss limitations of ratios. Before we look at ratios, there are a number of cautionary points concerning their use that need to be identified. So when you are, when you are looking at ratios for a ratio analysis, the date and duration of the financial statements being compared should be the same. If not, the effect of seasonality may cause erroneous conclusions to be drawn. So I have to compare apples with apples. So the date and duration, the date and duration of financial statements should be the same for an effective ratio analysis. The accounts to be compared should be prepared on the same basis. For example, your, there are different valuation methods, there are different uh, uh, measurement and recuperation criteria, you should refer to your financial reporting. So the basis that has been prepared should be the same. If company A used absorption costing and used uh, people in valuing, I should also look for a company that uses absorption costing and fee for for value inventory valuation. So different treatment of stocks or depreciations or asset valuations will distort the results. A company A might seem unprofitable or due to the differences in in uh, preparation basis. And in order to judge the overall performance of the firm, a group of ratios, as opposed to just one or two, should be used. So I can't disregard a company based only on current ratios. I need to use a group of ratios. So in order to identify the trends, at least three years of ratios are normally required. I can't establish a trend based on one year or two, but normally three going forward. And in line with this, the limitations of ratios are that large uh, firms operating in, diff operating diff operate in different divisions and in different industries. So it might be difficult to develop meaningful industry averages. So it is more useful for small, narrow focused firms and inflation may distort our financial information. Now let's move on to the most important section of financial statement analysis. So for me, the most important statement is, uh, the most important thing is how do you comment on financial performance? So probably you have calculated your ratios, maybe you've done your horizontal analysis in analyzing your financial statements, you've done your horizontal analysis, your vertical analysis, and your ratio analysis. How do you comment on the financial performance of that specific entity? So, in commenting on performance, I need you to tell me the direction. So say, sales have increased or have decreased from 9% to 1%. Sales have increased from 3% to 6%. So there are other terms that can be used. For example, sales have slumped, which means it was a huge slump, maybe from 50% to 5%. Or you can use the reverse. Um, sales have increased by a higher magnitude from 5% to 25%. So normally telling me the direction normally results in no marks but it tells me you are in the right path. So if you can analyze and you can tell me the cells have increased or decreased, I can uh, now know you are in the correct path. From there, you now, to tell, you now need to tell me why. Based on your understanding, why have the cells decreased? Why have the cells decreased? So in, in explaining the why, I need you need to, ex to explain it from the perspective of what were you expecting versus what actually happened. Were you expecting that sales were going to increase or were going to decrease 
due to the tough economic conditions, but still the war actually rates have actually increased. You also have to explain it from the context of the industry norms. Using industry averages, it looks like average industry is 12 percent. But why did you get higher than the industry norm? Why did you get lower than the industry norm? We also look at the performance of that specific company, drilling down to the operations of that specific company. So companies or the sum of the ratios are company or entity specific. So performance should drill down to what makes up the company. You should I'll take you back or uh, to further explain performance. You can as well look at your business, the entity's business model. What do they do? What is the normal course of their trading? What makes their performance higher or lower based on that company-specific information? And also, in your in your explanation, they should be reasonable. The explanations or the causes or the effects of why something has happened or why sales have increased or why sales have reduced should be reasonable. And to further explain, you can make use of unusual activities. Maybe during the year they disposed of a loss-making division. Maybe that's why the profit increased. Maybe during the year they decided to take up on what on more research and development. Maybe that's why their profits are minimized. Last but not least, when commenting, it is very important that you link the ratios or your analysis. So for linking, like we uh, like we explained in the last slide, one ratio cannot be used, but a group of ratios is more effective in analyzing a company's performance. So for example, maybe your current your current ratio has increased twenty seventy to twenty eighteen, your current ratio has increased. But to further explain, you can make use of your data states. Maybe your data states have reduced from six days to twenty five days. So you are now collecting your money your money's area which makes the company or the entity liquid. So that's why maybe the current ratio has what? Has improved. So that's how I have linked these two ratios. So it's, uh, just to further add on, some ratios are company or industry specific. So for example, your normal typical banking sector ratios are different from a manufacturing ratios. Why? Because you are looking at different things that drive the operations of that specific entity. So for in a banking environment, knowing the bank charges, knowing the interest received is more important, unlike maybe in a mining environment, unlike maybe in a manufacturing environment, unlike maybe in a medical environment. So comment contextually and you should comment accordingly. So you know the industry, you know your company, your expectation versus your what actual reasonability, and to also assist you, you make use of unusual activities. So that's how you comment on ratios. More more marks are awarded on the why and the linking. No marks are normally allocated for the direction to say sales have increased from nine percent to ten percent. Even a grade one pupil, you can see it. Even my grandmother or my grandfather in the rural areas can be able to evaluate and see that sales have increased. But the why in the linking now ends you more marks. So, for any follow up questions regarding financial statement analysis, contact the MAP department, that is myself, Musawashi SCAA. Elios at CAA, Tapiwa at CAA, or you can alternatively use our departmental email address. That's monthly at CAA.ac.cw.